You are now listening to Random Ramblings with Rock. Yay! Yay! <laughs> What up, everybody? This your boy, B-Rob, and I'm back with another edition of the Random Rounds with Rob podcast. First and foremost, I'd like to thank you, the listener, for coming back each and every week or however you listen to podcasts. If you're a first-time listener, I very much so appreciate you for giving my show a try. And if anybody referred you to me, if you're in that vicinity, give them a crisp high five. That's a 10 right there. But if you're not in that vicinity, use your social media app of choice to send them a DM telling them thank you for that referral you know don't be sending them nothing slick in the dms let me showing no penis parts and ovaries and whatnot i don't even know if you can see an ovary with your eyeballs but hey i said it <laughs> um anyway got a guest with me on this edition of the random rounds with rob podcast he joins an illustrious list of uh guests from the realm of professional wrestling to include kiara hogan Kiefer bartek jj blake um Damon Buchanan, the Mad Hatter. Some of you may not know him, but I said it because he trained me. Um, J.A. Fair, another guy that I know. Uh, freaking Marty DeMoff Martinez. Goddamn Brian Cage. Um, who else? It's somebody else I know that's been on the show, and I'm forgetting, and I'm very sorry if I oh the motherfucking Pope goddamn D'Angelo De Niro goddamn the originator of the Rainmaker gimmick I always gotta pl- give high praise for that and uh if I left you out I'm sorry but I'm trying to remember this off the top of my head and you know I ain't got a good memory that's why I podcast so I have audio recordings of the shit I say so you know it, it, it really is against me because damn I said some fly shit on here and it's recorded and motherfuckers can pull that shit up on me in court and shit I don't want to be like James Gunn and shit motherfucker pull up a tweet from 2009 and get me fired then eventually I get swept under the rug and get rehired again later I don't want that shit to happen I just want to have a continuous stream of work And but anyway apart from the course joining me on this edition of the Random Rounds with Rob podcast is a man that I've always seen on Instagram draped in gold I've never I've very rarely seen this gentleman without a title belt and shit damn I don't even know what this motherfucker look like without a title belt damn he's a man of many talents many hobbies and whatnot and we what from what I found out in the last couple months frequent the same circle in the RBR uh, neighborhood uh, the man the myth the myth uh, uh, damn I'm stumbling the man the myth the legend Goddamn King Blackie himself, the man of the 215, the, the master of all the Philly cheese steaks, the ruler of all video game domains, daggone Eric DeShields. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. I love that introduction. Thank you very much. And yes, I am the master of all the game domains, everything from the Atari to the Xbox One. So thank you very much. Yeah, now I, I, that's that was a thing that I, I've been peeping uh, most recently or whatever because like I know of you through the domain of Instagram I, I've been peeping through that window and um, you, what you got going on and what you've been putting out there to the world and whatnot and I've seen the the collection starting to grow man you got the Nintendo in there you got the Atari I, th- I think you got a Dreamcast in there right that's right yeah. and uh, I don't know like uh, every other month I'll sit there and I'll be like oh what is that a Commodore get that I, I you know i wasn't alive for that so i'm like yeah let me get that commodore what's that original game boy what's that a game boy sp yeah man it's uh it's a healthy addiction i love it <laughs> kids love it they be like you know they don't punish me. i'm like you don't get to play the xbox one what am i gonna play the sega cd with one button uh the one button controller go get it over there so you know 
Yeah, that that is uh yeah, because nobody knows the pain. Like, you know, like even going back to the old Atari with the goddamn the, the joystick and the one button on the damn thing and whatnot. I'm just like, how did we manage this shit? But it was the only thing that we had. Hey, we didn't know any better, man. Back when they had the, uh, what was that, the full motion video games and you were thinking you were doing something, but really you're just hitting left and right and then they would do it. And you're like, oh, I just created that movie to do this. And it's like, no, you just pressed the left button when they told you to. But, you know. Yeah. <laughs> good time. But, like, uh, you talk about the Commodore or whatever. That's the gray one that I think it looked like it got a keyboard on the top or whatever. Yes, it's uh, it's horrible. I'll be honest with you. I paid uh, $123 for it. Cause um I eBay everything yeah. and uh, it's terrible. Um I have it. It's nice. It's not even hooked up, but it's nice yeah. and it's terrible at the same time. Yeah, cause I think um even before the uh, the OG Nintendo, that was the very first video game system I ever played. And ah. Cause my, my I don't know um like I was born to older parents, and then um, okay. so I believe you know when that technology came available to them. They somehow still had it when I was, you know, coming of age. So I got to play that. And then um, when Nintendo came out, fucking Mario Brothers, goddamn duck hunt on the same cartridge. It was a wrap for me. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to say, man, you uh, you look like you would have been a, a Nintendo uh, Power Glove, uh, Power Mat type of guy back in the day. Oh, man. I had the Power Mat. I didn't. I never got a chance to freaking handle a Power Glove, man. Oh, oh. I've Damn seen, man, my heart bleeds for you, brother. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've I've seen it like in a in a display case. I I've never actually physically put my hands on a power glove before. <laughs> oh yeah, it's uh, one of those type of things you got to do at least once. You know, like um, beating up the kids at Dojo Wars. You gotta like you gotta beat you, you gotta try it at least once, man. Word word. Now, like, let's even talk about that because, like, I remember the old school commercials and whatnot. And most recently, I've revisited just um, you know, the visuals of the Power Glove and whatnot. I posted uh, pictures of it on my Instagram most recently. The OG Power Glove because I believe there was two iterations of it, and then there was somebody that custom made a uh, Power Glove to look like the Infinity Gauntlet. That sounds about right. Yeah, I know they did do a recall because something about the uh, the company Glamco or, or like whatever. I- I'm just going off the dome. They had re uh, redesigned it or something. Yeah, so I remember that. Yeah. So I was just you know seeing pictures of today, and I kind of got inspired because I do a little digital doodling and whatnot. So mm-hmm. I um, I got something I'm got something in mind with the power glove as the theme and whatnot. I'm going to Retro Palooza here in Houston. Well, Pasadena. It's part of Houston. It's way down there. Houston is his own goddamn planet. But um, that's June eighth and the ninth. And it's just a retro video game and anime convention. So I'll be there with my uh, my merch and whatnot. You know about the merch. And I got a damn, I got some use of the power glove that's going to be involved in my new piece. Yeah, matter of fact, I think I remember seeing that on your Instagram, right? The uh, the Infinity Power, uh, the Infinity Gauntlet Power Glove, right? Correct. Then you post that? Yeah. Yeah. But, like, I mean... When did the addiction start for you? I mean, I already told you what mine was. That was when the, uh, the original Nintendo came out. But when did it start for you? And how did when did you start to amass this collection that you have now? You know, to be honest, I was playing uh, PS4 like maybe about uh, three years ago, and uh, there was nothing that was coming out. I think I was playing like it was a terrible game. It was like a Dead Island. I was like, damn, they don't have, really have anything on a PS4. It's not like when I was a kid. And then I started like, damn, I remember when I had Super Nintendo. And I was like, damn, those games was fun. So then I ordered one and it came through the mail. And I was like, oh, this was easy. So, <laughs> I, started, <laughs> so I was like, I never had a Sega CD. So I got a Sega CD, and then a 32X. Then I was like, well, damn, I always wanted a regular Nintendo. Bought another regular Nintendo. It just and it just kept escalating. Then I went on YouTube and I started seeing like people game rooms and I was like, I want a game room. <laughs> so I just started just man, anytime I heard about something, I even got an R zone, believe it or not. Whoa, what was that one? That was uh the one that gave you like a headache, you strapped oh, it on your head yeah, and it was yeah, like yeah, a yeah. big virtual boy. Yeah. Yeah. There's like the virtual boy, right? Yeah, it was like a tiger handheld strapped to your forehead that gave you a headache in thirty minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it had, had like the little square glass screen on it. 
Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I, was, yeah, yeah. Because I had a karate game on there, or some shit like that. Uh, was it Virtual Fighter? Was that the one? It might have been. Yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was stupid, man. <laughs> but I played yeah, the fuck I, out of it. <laughs> yeah, like I remember, I asked my mom for a Virtual Boy that Christmas. She came home with the R Zone, and then I found out, like uh, maybe like a week after Christmas, like. Oh, you got this one because it was thirty, and the Virtual Boy was one seventy nine. I see what you did, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and then years later, you come to appreciate those things and be like, uh, "I see what you were doing there, you son of a bitch, <laughs> saving that money." <laughs> yeah, like oh, I guess we did need to uh, eat that money. That's fine. That's cool. Yeah, I can understand. But like, I mean, shit. Like, I think the last thing I seen was maybe the Dreamcast. What what you got since then? Um, since the Dreamcast, uh, I started getting into, um, getting all in one carts, which are, uh, basically like, uh, you can get a, a, a cartridge that has 143 games in one, uh, in one cartridge. Shit. Yeah. So, yeah. It's a, it's a trip. It's like having like all the ROMs that's on your PC when you got emulators. I'm sorry for anybody if this is getting too nerdy, but, uh, that's my new thing now. Like I have a cart that has 500 games on the regular Nintendo, just one cartridge. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, yeah, man, it's a, uh, it's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, what's the next piece you're looking to acquire? Uh, uh, Atari Jaguar. Oh man, I never got to. What? Nah, I lied. I, I think I may have played it. No, I'm thinking the Turbo Graphics 16. That's what I'm thinking about. You got one of them? Uh, no, not yet, not yet. It's the uh, Turbo Graphics, mm-hmm. the Atari Jaguar, and uh, the 3DO. Those are like the next three purchases. Oh yeah, because um, I never played the 3DO as well, but I th- Jaguar had that freaking crazy ass uh, Mortal Kombat ripoff on there, I think. And I, oh yeah, yeah, I can't remember the name of, but yeah, I remember that. It was mm-hmm. yeah, because that that was the only reason I wanted to play it because of that game. Yeah, but the games was like uh, like I keep hearing that when the games came out, it was like seven hundred dollars, like something ridiculous, and I was like, damn, you know, my mom worked at Popeyes, I ain't getting that. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, shit goddamn now you can probably get it for 700 pesos which is probably like two dollars or something i don't know <laughs> oh yeah well shipping the handling on is gonna be like 130 dollars but yeah i mean pretty much yeah yeah but now um, i don't know what so what's the end goal i mean because i mean we got the playstation 5 coming out obviously we gonna jump on new generation shit but other oh, than those it. other than those three i mean once you once you form the freaking console gauntlet and whatnot, <laughs> so it's just games from then on, right? What's some of your? Let's go down the consoles that you got now. I'm, I know I'm jumping all over the place, but I'm I'm very intrigued. Out of the consoles that you got, what's your one favorite game from each that you can recall off the top of your head? Okay, well on the Genesis because I'm inside my game room right now. So as you do, I hope you I hope you are. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, my Sega Genesis is a uh, X Men Two. Yeah. Um, on the Dreamcast, it would be uh, Power Stone. Oh man, I love that game. <laughs> Listen, I used to uh, me and my friends when we were uh, in middle school. Nobody had a Dreamcast, but the game store it was a, a store called Power Gamer before Funko Land went out of business and became GameStop. So uh, we used to go to Power Gamer. They would have one set up. I'd be like, "Yo, plug me in, man. I'd be in there." I'd be winning. They'd be passing the stick around, man. Power Stone was my game, man. Yeah, I had a Dreamcast, and I, because my thing was like, I would buy the current gen console, and then when the next gen console come, I would sell the old one and all the accessories so I can get the new one. That was just like how it was when I had the Nintendo. Um, I wanted the Super Nintendo, so I gathered up all my stuff. I sold the old Nintendo so I can get the Super Nintendo. And then, you know, went from the Super Nintendo, what, the, went to GameCube, right? No, it's Nintendo 64. And right. then Nintendo 64 to GameCube and so on and so forth. That's how I always did it. So, I mean, I never really held on to those. But the Dreamcast, I thought, was way, just like the Sega Game Gear, was like way before its time, man. And yeah, you could go online with it. Like, just think about that. Going online with a Dreamcast back in, like, 97. Mm-hmm. Oh shit! Or even the Game Gear, man. It's just like the color backlit screen, and the, uh, I mean the battery life was shit. I mean, and it had that damn power pack that looked like a I don't know a mouse or some shit. But still, it was fucking 
they had a TV tuner attachment for that thing to where you could watch TV on that motherfucker. <laughs> you want to hear something funny? I have one of those. Oh, man. I always wanted it so bad. I never got it. <laughs> Yeah, it's. I mean, it costs almost nothing now because like uh, everything's like digital, so like, it's like whatever. But yeah, man, I had to go get one. I wanted one. Like, I, like in my head as a kid, it was like, yo, when we go on this uh this family vacation, yep. I'm gonna play the Game Gear and then I'm gonna slap the antenna on. I'm gonna be watching Alf or whatever was on TV at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Alf. But yeah, I'll be watching Alien Nations and I'll be like, yeah, but. Then like batteries back then was like what like uh, some double A's like a four pack was like six ninety nine and then yeah. last three hours. I know. I mean, I was going through the bitches like Tic Tacs, man. I, I popped them bitches in. I played like four five levels of goddamn Sonic or some shit, and the lighter start blinking. I'm like fuck. And then you know, I thought I was a pimp when I had the goddamn battery pack, boy. I put that bitch in my cargo pocket, and I just be walking oh, around. Fancy. <laughs> it was fancy. Yeah, I was fancy, man. I, I had to have that shit. But like, I mean, does your collection extend to the handhelds as well? I know you talked about the R Zone or whatnot, but do you yeah, have- I got the uh, game, the Game Gear. I have the uh, the original Game Boy with the green screen with the coloration changing from gray to like kind of green because it's like that old. I got the SP. I got the 3DS. Uh, trying to remember, I got uh, uh, the PlayStation Vita, the PS Go. Yeah, I um. Yeah, man, I'll do it, man. Yeah. So <laughs> as far as the Nintendo handhelds, because they have a whole bunch of different um, variations or whatnot, do you go for each one or are you just like the ones that you like? Yeah, like I, I kind of like uh, the SP because like it, they do little improvements like over time. And uh, I just like my ultimate goal is to start when I get done collecting to answer your uh, your earlier question, have like like turn my game room into kiosks like they do at like GameStop. Oh, yeah, I just, got you. Like, Exactly. Just have it just lined up. Mm-mm. So yeah, I collect the uh, any of the Game Boys that I see, man. Like right now, I'm trying to get some um Japan ones. Like the Japan ones are like slightly different or whatever, but yeah. they let you play those uh those imports, man. So I'm trying to get my hands on some of those as well. I just like collecting. Yeah, I got it. I mean, I, I'm I'm surrounded by movies right now on all four sides, so I got you. <laughs> What's your favorite genre? Action. Action. I mean. You, you, I would, I would think comedy or whatever, but I would prefer an action movie over, a, over, a, over a funny comedy. Because I mean, I, I love like the Raid, goddamn the Protector, goddamn, you know, any martial arts. I, I would guess I would say martial arts. Oh, you know, it is action, but you know, it's the specifics. So, okay. you know, anything Michael Jai White in, I, I'm watching that shit. Scott Atkins, you know, all them. Kicky flippy motherfuckers. I'm watching all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I loved uh, Jet Li in the one. That was my movie, man. Dog, I mean, people be talking shit about that movie, and I get so fucking mad, man. I, I love that shit. I seen it in the theaters. That was the very first movie I ever saw Jason Statham in. And it's fucking amazing. Yeah, man, when they disrespect Jet Li, just uppercut him. You know what I mean? Just right when they, right in mid sentence, just. Don't you dare talk about Jet Li like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, I, it wouldn't be even a full up because it'd just be like a jab to the throat, just like right in the middle of the Adam's apple. Just <laughs> oh, like a Sergeant Gal uppercut off a of Street Fighter. I respect that. <laughs> but I mean, just even for that time, I mean, the the special because I'm a special effects person too. So like the movie could be shitty as fuck, but if it got some bomb ass special effects in it, I kind of like I'll let it slide. So then um, when the Matrix came out, that blew my fucking mind. Um, the work that they did in um, Blade 2 with um, just the CGI mixed with the live action shit that fucking man I, I don't my favorite movies man <laughs> yeah see I'm the opposite man when I see terrible CGI I start throwing shit at the screen like when I was watching the other day I was watching Mortal Kombat the, uh, the original one oh man and I was like who made this shit like <laughs> It's so obvious in front of the green screen. It started making my eyes hurt. I went to the Chinese store, got a five dollar platter, came back, and was like, "Why am I turn the shit off?" <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't stand bad CGI, well, like the early nineties bad CGI. Well, I mean, to go back upon it, you know, yeah, I got you. With with everything that we have now, I, I mean, shit, my phone can do better CGI than some of the shit that we saw back in the day. But um, I still appreciate it because. When I watch those movies, it take me back to that time frame, and I was just like, "Man, this was like the top of the line shit right here." 
when this came out. And then now we got this other shit that has marvelous and miraculous special effects, but the story is just like poo. So <laughs> that's true. That's true. Best example is I was watching uh, Jumanji the other day. You know what? Actually, not a bad film. The one with The Rock that came oh, yeah. out like a little while ago. I, I was wholeheartedly against that shit because mm, like the, the Rock and Kevin Hart has has reached the zenith to where any movie that they are in, they are all The Rock and Kevin Hart. They're, they're not the character that they're playing. They're just the fucking Rock and Kevin Hart. So the only reason I went honestly to see this movie because I got kids. You understand how that works. So of we all go make a family day out of it. And it was it surprised me. It was actually better than what I thought it was. It didn't lean heavily on the original. I mean, there was a slight reference in there to mm-hmm. the original. But I mean, it was its own thing. I don't understand the fuck why they're doing another one. I mean, I know why, but I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, like that's. uh It was fine where it was. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. And also, I was watching it. First of all, I didn't watch the first one. Even though, like, I love Robin Williams, mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? I don't care about this rhino and the doctor and trees and grass and whatever the hell they had. I don't care. But when I watched this, uh, the remake, I was like, oh, that's the story. I mean, it's a shitty story, but I mean, it's, a, it's an okay movie. It's fun. It was free on Amazon Prime. I didn't care. I was like, it's whatever. It's yeah. a good movie. I like it. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, I mean, to, to even in that vein or whatever, I mean, what's another movie that you rolled upon like that to where like, ah, this is going to be shit, but you wind up watching it and enjoyed it? Um, I don't know, man, because like I watch so many movies like to not have a collection of movies, man, like I randomly just pick stuff and just like, you know what? I mean, you know, I'll, I'll give it to you and you're probably going to laugh at this. I was watching Harlem Nights. Oh, that's yeah. I'm not gonna laugh at you. But here's the thing, though. I will watch it, and I'll be like, "Oh man, look at Richard Pryor's mustache and the fat (laughs) chick." I'm not watching this shit. This is old people shit. And it's like now that I'm a man of a certain age, I went back and watched it, and I was like, "Oh, he shot her in the foot." And then I'm just like watching the scenes and shit. I'm just like, "This is a damn good movie." I had to go to work, and I came back in, started again from the beginning, watched it from beginning to end. I was like, "Mm, "I get it." Either that, either either I get it or I'm old. I I don't even know anymore. Yeah, I mean, you, you. You grow a appreciation for things once you get older and whatnot. Um, that movie, we 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 talk about it often or whatever, and we always had the com- same conversation now to where like, damn near everybody in that movie is dead. Dude, I just was telling my supermodel hot girlfriend that, and um, <laughs> she'll love that part. But uh, I was I was sitting there, I was just like. Yeah, man. I was like, yeah, I was watching Harlem Nights. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Everybody on the screen right now I'm looking at is dead. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. Everybody but Eddie. Yep. Yeah. Eddie, Eddie, <laughs> Eddie is still alive. Goddamn. Um, Arsenio Hall is still alive. Mm-hmm. And that's the only one that I can think of right off the top of my head. <laughs> yeah, it was like it was like Red Fox was on the screen. And uh, um, uh, the, the, the one, I forgot, the uh, Saved by an Angel chick. I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, but, Della uh, Reese. Before, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I was looking for her name, and that 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 one mysterious show that's on like Lifetime popped up. I don't know. <laughs> I don't watch Lifetime, by the way. Um, but yeah, everybody's dead, man. It's it's something, man. Mm, it's sad. Yeah, it's like watching WCW. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of those are still alive. You just don't know where the fuck they hit. This is true. Goddamn! Speaking of professional wrestling, I like how you segued for us. I mean, oh. man of a uh, high acclaim and caliber and talents and whatnot. Uh, when did your humble beginning start? How how did you happen upon professional wrestling, and what made you decide to make it uh, a career path? All right. Well, at this point now, I've been doing it for uh, going on eleven years, and. Uh, I went to a show back in like two five. Well, first of all, like when I was in high school, we used to wrestle because it was like it was cool because of the Rock and Austin and everything. Yep. And then I swear to God, like I, I went from um, eighth grade, we graduated to ninth because you know that's a natural progression. But I went to ninth grade in high school and like everybody had beards and was like six feet tall. I was still like five feet, and um, I was like, yeah, man, did y'all see SummerSlam? Like you still watch that wrestling shit? <laughs> Shit's good. And I was like. I mean, yeah, whatever. It was on the TV. 
So then I went through this phase where I was just like, oh, it's not cool anymore. And everybody's like, yeah, man, either rap or sell drugs. And um, uh, I would be a terrible drug dealer because like standing outside, no thank you. So uh, I started rapping and uh, then I realized, oh yeah, to like really go further in rapping, you gotta um, do nightclubs and like, uh, you know, ciphers. And I was like, damn, I kind of don't want to do all that. Uh, just give me a deal. So that didn't work out. And um. I got to a point where I was like, all right, so what do I want to do? And I was like, damn, I always wanted to try wrestling. So me and a friend of mine went to Monday Night Raw, and uh, it was like uh, John Cena versus Randy Orton. And um, we were watching it, and I was like, this shit sucks on TV, but I kind of like it in person. There's no yeah. commentary. Yeah. I was yeah. like, I could do this shit. <laughs> so then I started <laughs> – so then I started like looking uh, at schools and I went down to the old ECW arena. It's called the arena now or the 2300 arena. And um, I went in there and CZW was running and uh, I met DJ Hyde and Maven Bentley. And uh, I got introduced to uh, some guys that's in NXT now that you would know, like Adam Cole and yeah. Um, Bebe. Yeah. Hey, hey, yeah. I would like to say that I gave him that, but I didn't. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, um, I'm going and I'm thinking it's going to be easy, man. The first time you hit the mat, if they don't tell you exactly how you should do from knocking yourself out, you knock yourself out. And that sucked. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's nothing worse than that, man. Like, think about the worst fight for the listeners. Think about the worst fight you ever had. Like that knockout punch where you saw stars and you were just like, damn, like, I hope no one saw that that's what it feels like when you hit that wrestling mat no crowd no music no nothing just yeah yeah so got used to that and then the throwing up part and all this yeah been there uh-huh. been there <laughs> yeah we get on the show um it was like a battle royal show which is like i guess that's how they break people in uh, around that time so i got into a battle royal for this guy called chris cash he's a wrestler who died in 2005 and they were doing like a memorial show up to that point and um i did that uh i did that show and i was like oh that feels great and they were like yeah man that was great so now you're gonna be the manager of pinky sanchez i said <laughs> oh I'm, yeah he's cool <laughs> yeah uh so i'm like so what is my name it's like well naturally you're gonna be blackie uh <laughs> I mean, it was an upgrade because during training, they forgot my name was Eric and they called me Tupac the whole time. So, I mean, I was like, I guess this is uh, progressing. You know, we'll see. By the way, your last name is going to be Sanchez. Blackie Sanchez. I said, now how am I going to be a black Mexican? Mm-hmm. They're trying to call you Dirty Sanchez. That's what they was doing. <laughs> that was one of my moves. Ah! <laughs> uh, the black slap and the Dirty Sanchez. That's right. You're taking both of those tonight, kid. <laughs> But yeah, as the time went on, um, I just started doing like feds that was like local. And, uh, you know, you go the normal way, you get the shit beat out of you by, uh, I was getting beat up by like John Dahmer, Sammy Callahan, uh, Big Vito, uh, just people like you would just go to these shows and they'd like, Hey man, so this is what's on the card tonight. You're getting fucking murdered. Damn. All right, cool. I just want to do it. No, 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 no. Just, just. Just take the ass whooping. Cool. <laughs> you just you learn how to take hits. You learn how to bump. You just work your way up, man. And uh, I I made it to Monster Factory. I made it to Ring of Honor. I, um, I just I made my way around a loop until like right now where I call home. I went back to CZW, and it's uh, different this time around because now I got that respect of like working uh names and i'm just waiting for that one platform it's like how we were talking earlier mm-hmm. you know i'm just waiting for that one viral moment you know what i mean you have to stab a motherfucker or something you know have his lung fall out and just be like world star you know we'll then, see. i got you yeah i mean freaking uh what's his name loki just stabbed freaking conan not too long ago so i mean it could happen I saw it. See, I forgot about that so now i'm gonna have to hit somebody with my chrysler 300 that's what i'm gonna do i'm just run them over oh well, somebody did that not too long ago hit a guy shit Run out of shit man hmm. I would say use a game console and choke him with a Wii controller or some shit like that but mm, I don't know yeah that just might not be I don't know maybe like light a whole a whole carton of cigarettes and stick it in their eye socket you know something like that maybe maybe yeah I mean that could work I mean I, 
depends. Well, you know, on I'm, from, I'm from Philly. I'll just shoot them. That's what I'll do. That's Th- that's what we're missing in professional wrestling. A uh, good old fashioned shooting. <laughs> that's right. Drop down, leapfrog, shoot them right in the stomach. That's what I. Rob, you are the man, brother. Let me write that down. I'm shooting somebody. There we go. <laughs> I mean, I mean, what would be the setup for that though? I mean, I, I can I, we can come up with a good uh, sequence. All right, now, mm-hmm. um, hmm, let's see. Uh, he, do the headlock takedown, and he see you reaching in the waistband. You know, you do the go go behind, get you in the waist lock, push you into the ropes. You know, freaking shit. Where could it go from there? Goddamn, uh, you, you duck under, slide between the legs, come up, bow, shoot him in the back of the leg. He drop down to a knee. Goddamn <laughs> shining wizard. There it is. <laughs> Listen, it's gonna look like Mortal Kombat eleven. I swear to God, I'm gonna just sit there, you're gonna do his little flippity flop, bow right in the one leg, bow right in the, the second leg, and you know, we, we do it from the waist down because we don't really yeah. want them to die because we don't want to see me on scared street. Like we don't want to we don't want that, you yeah. know. And and uh waist down is not attempted murder. <laughs> exactly. I like I wasn't even aimed at him. I mean, you know, yeah. he just happened to be there. Yeah, he just got in the way of my bullets. <laughs> Yeah, can I have those back, please? But yeah, you know, something like that. We'll work it out. And, and, um, what I was saying, like in the intro or whatever, and it, it holds to be true or whatever. Any time that I've seen you, you know, from following you on Instagram and whatnot, you've always had a, a title of some sort and whatnot. Uh, what was it like to win your first title? The first one, um, it was funny because, like, uh, when I first started wrestling, uh, everybody kept telling me, like, black people don't wrestle. Mm-hmm. and like they don't make it and then it was like you'll never be able to do it because when i first started i was 117 pounds and they were just like you're too small to be a wrestler and then when i started wrestling i was like you'll never get one and then promoters were like you're going to get a belt and then they'd be like ah don't be a don't be a mark for the championship you'll get it when you get it so when i finally won one like a, a few years later man it was like i had a tear in my eye Cause I was just like marking out for myself, like, oh, this is what it feels like. Uh, currently, right now, I'm the ACBW United States Champion. Uh, not that I'm counting 362 days, but I'm not counting out. But uh, you know, it's nothing like winning a championship. And the first one was a cruiserweight title, and I loved that cruiserweight title because I thought about Chris Jericho and Rey Mysterio and like Alex Wright and like. All the WCW cruiserweights who really didn't get shine on the show, mm-hmm. but when it was on the show, they shined. And uh, that belt meant the world to me, that cruiserweight title, because I was taking on anybody. Sean Carr from New York. I was taking on um, Drew Blood uh, from CZW. Just whoever they, they bored in from whatever companies, I for them gladly, man. And that was just that was my belt, man. Word. So out of the, all the ones that you... Uh, got a hold to or whatever that that's the one that you um connect with the most correct uh that's like my favorite that has like some of my favorite memories the one i connect with the most now is the united states title i carry now i just beat uh ken rollins from delaware he's a good kid on the come up and uh a month ago i beat james ellsworth <laughs> i've seen that yeah, oh man, I made him tap out like a bitch. I love that. That was a good one. You didn't um, put, you, you wasn't able to put a chin lock on him, was you? You know, you got to have one to put someone in one. So, yeah. uh Yeah, he evaded my dreaded uh three-handed family granada chin lock. He uh he avoided that, but uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh also um to add to your list of accolades, multiple time tag champion. Yes, with my uh, partner, Tyrino. We're currently right now the Brawl American Tag Team Champions. Uh, we're waiting on the next show to, to defend them. They also have Brawl, Brawl Tag Team Champions there, too, which is Mark. Uh, who cares? We care about me. So, uh, yeah, so the Gunners, yeah, me and Ty, we're the uh, American Tag Team Champions right now. And how, how that that um, come to be, that relationship, that partnership? He lived around the corner from me, and I didn't know it when I was training at CZW. <laughs> so we were just talking and training like, hey, I'm a black guy. And he was like, hey, I'm also a black guy. Like, oh, and we're here together. Hey. So we were just talking. We would go home. I guess we would go home different ways. You know, he got in his car. I got in mine. His car was shitty. And uh, one day, 
he needed a ride or some shit uh, to go home. I'm like, where you live at? And he was like, yeah, man, I live uh, down bottom. I said, me too. And uh, it was like, yeah, I live on um, Ogden. I said, oh, man, that's crazy. I live around the corner. He said, you live around the corner? I said, yeah, I didn't. Did we just become best friends? That's pretty much what just happened. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Oh man! So I mean, what's that like? I mean, often, um, how often do y'all go on the road together? Uh, right now we kind of decrease because of like uh, injuries. Like he'll get injured, I get injured. Uh, he'll get booked at one company, I'll get booked at another. Like we're doing a lot of single stuff, and um, Brawl is the only place we're really doing tag team stuff. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but beforehand we was taking bookings like uh, like every weekend. Traveling to York, Lancaster, Delaware, the dreaded parts of New Jersey. Any shows that was in Philly, just anywhere in the tri-state. Even Virginia, even uh, West Virginia. And West Virginia, for anybody who's traveled there and was black, you'll know. It's it's terrible down there. Them cops, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry for your luck. And especially you had to have a name of uh, King Blackie. I mean... <laughs> Oh yeah, they just pull you over. What are you doing down here at three in the afternoon? I'm like, well, well, damn, the sun's out. Uh, we were just going to a wrestling show. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to show me. I, I mean, listen, I don't want to bad talk West Virginia, but I mean, you know. He's like, what are you yeah. doing around here, Blackie? How'd you know my name? <laughs> oh, that's your name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh shit. Now, um. Obviously, well, well uh, versed in a singles career, but, but what is that like working with a partner? I mean, certain aspects you already brought up of it. I mean, you kind of put you on the shelf as far as the tag teams go. You know, one person goes down with injury and that kind of puts the momentum of the story on hold until the other one's well and so on and so forth. But like as a partnership coming up with the moves, the travel schedule and all this stuff, what that's like? It's um. Uh, I'm not going to lie, it can be challenging because uh, I'm a smaller guy and a lot of times I like to do fast stuff and uh, I like to do certain flippy flips and uh, I like certain sequences and uh, my partner is a bigger guy and he likes to knock people the fuck out and he likes to toss them. So trying to put together sometimes like trying to put together a collective um, thought uh of like what a way you know matches or things should go sometimes like you butt heads you know a lot of times people don't uh be forthcoming and honest about it one thing about me man i'm 92 plus eight you know what i mean i'll always keep it 100 with you so you know there's a lot of good things like sometimes you're like yo i just throw this finisher and you click and then there's sometimes where it's like yo we should do this that this that this that this that and third and your partner just be like nah well <laughs> Now you got to go have a match out there and you want to do this and you want to do that. And judging on the crowd's reaction, one of you are going to be right and one of you are going to be wrong. So, you know, yeah. just like brother fights, you know what I mean? It's, it's basically like a brother. It's like a brotherhood. You know what I mean? Like, like when you have a real brother, like you sit there, you argue, you beef, you bump heads, and then you come back together. Usually, you know, some family, you know, one brother kills the other, but you know, whatever. But this one, you know, nobody's killing nobody. Yeah, nobody's getting stabbed with swords and shit or shot in the kneecaps. No, not unless they book them. So, yeah. No. no. <laughs> Have you ever faced each other? Um, One time, um, it didn't turn out too well for me at that point. So, uh, <laughs> I'm just going to skip right along, man. <laughs> How about those Avengers? <laughs> oh, man. Did you see the movie? Brother, I seen it the night that it came out. My girlfriend was mad because she was supposed to go with me. But I told her, I said, listen, I told her this back in eight, uh, in March. I said, on the 26th, you need to be here because if you're not, I'm going to go see it. Mm -hmm. She wasn't here, man. <laughs> so, yeah, I saw it. I, I understand. I, I mean, I was there opening night as well. I didn't eat. I went there Thursday night, ready to go. <laughs> oh, yeah. I now mean, let me ask you a question. Did you did you wear uh, an infinity glove? Did you wear uh, some type of um, Avengers merch? Well, I mean, you know, I'm always in the Walmart, so I was just uh, in there, you know, low no lady purse up with snacks because you know how we do. And uh, I happened to come across a clearance rack 
with a Captain Marvel shirt in there for like five dollars. So I, I, I rock that out. <laughs> ah, uh, let me just put in a sidebar of I enjoy your Walmart logs. And uh, going back to it, yeah, you know, the funny thing about this year was all of a sudden everybody gave a fuck about Marvel. Everybody was like, don't spoil it for me. I'm like, bro, it's been out two weeks now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If I want to talk to this man about how Iron Man dies. Oh, damn. I should have uh, should have said, like, spoiler alert, right? Uh, I mean, it's cool. We passed that window because, I mean, even the directors was like, man, wait, you got a two week window. <laughs> OK, well, they said it was OK. But uh, yeah, I was trying to talk to somebody about it. And uh, no, I was like, don't ruin it for me. I'm like, it literally came out like three Thursdays ago. Yeah. So if you, ain't, if you ain't see it now, man, shit. Yeah, you can kiss uh, my ass. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I'm like, hey, man, if you ain't see this yet, man, wait till I tell you the ending to Batman Returns. Put his hands on his ear. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love the movie. I mean, uh, they right. had to kill Iron Man off, I guess. But I mean, yeah. shit, man, it's still uh, a. T- I'm not gonna lie, I sweated out my eyeball. Yeah, yeah, I had a little perspiration around the eyelids as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, yeah. uh, um, we, everybody talking about what they like about it, what they like about it, what they like about it. Did, was there anything in the movie that you did not like about it? Um, in retrospect, I didn't like how my man Thanos uh took the L in the first couple of minutes. Like, I didn't like that. I was like, <laughs> damn, he just kicked y'all ass the whole last movie. I'm <laughs> like, Sheesh. And then someone tried to explain to me, like, think about the first movie and the second movie as a continuation. Mm. And, like, you were two and a half hours into his death. And I'm like, mm, nah, man, I just seen the movie, man. I didn't like that shit. Mm, I didn't like it. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it shocked the fuck out of me, which I think that was the intent. Because I was just like, there's still three hours left in this goddamn movie. <laughs> yeah. And, my, and then I was mad because. The directors, they got me all pissed off for the last year before the movie came out because I was thinking it was going to be that uncharismatic uh, Captain Marvel chick that was going to be the star of the film. Mm. And then they decided, like, let's turn her down from a 10 to a 2. Like, she'll come in sometimes. Like, she was Kramer. She was Kramer of the Infinity, uh, uh, of uh, the Avengers movie. Yeah, like, she, 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 was, she was a bro man from the fifth flow. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, like she came in for a sandwich and went right back through the uh through the window. That's a perfect analogy. <laughs> she went back to the fifth floor, and I was like, "Well, damn! I was ready to hate her the whole film." Yeah, I mean, and I believe that they needed that because damn, she she's strong. She's strong, man. <laughs> she way too strong. Yeah, I mean, that's true. That's true. I mean, oh, in the woman scene, um. Yeah, so that was funny because I was in the theater and they got a collective um, cringe. Mm. Um, but there was like a group of um, there was a group of sisters in the front of the movie theater that was like, I know that's right, yeah! But like pretty much like when you looked around though, the movie theater, everybody kind of was like, mm, mm. it was a, <laughs> that movie theater, man, like the audio like throughout the scenes, man, it had me, it had me dying because people was reacting how I was thinking in my head, but I didn't want to be the first person to be like, that sucked. You know what I mean? But like, you know, you talking about when they, all the women's assembled. Yeah. Yeah. And somebody was like, that's the A team. I'm like, that's not the A team, but I don't know. They got like some type of group or something. Like I'm, I'm in the comics, mm-hmm. but I'm not in to comics. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah I, I get you. Cause I mean, I know of, the, some of the storylines, but I don't know. I'm like not fully versed in it or whatever. I get my stuff secondhand. I don't actually sit there and read. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Like if I go on YouTube and I type in like a comic or whatever, and I'm like, oh, cool, it's on the screen. I can watch it. Yeah. But if you talk about going to the star and like flipping through the pages and looking at the panels, I'm like, come on, man. Ain't there an app for this, man? No. Yeah. That. Yeah. I mean, yeah. As much as I enjoy the movies or whatnot, I, I couldn't really go back and go through all that that history. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, matter of fact, I just went um last night on YouTube. I watched uh, I forgot however long it was, but it was pretty much the history of the Infinity Gauntlet. You know, the first one to have it, the people who wielded since then, and so on and so forth. It's very informative. <laughs> 
you know, I just found the um the Iron Man uh Infinity uh Gauntlet. Uh, and it's like $189 or whatever. You know I have to go get it as soon as I find the uh, the turnstile thing where you put it on the turnstile and it just spins around with yeah, the light. Yeah, yeah. As soon as I find one of those, it's on. Yeah. Shit, man. YouTube make make you a turnstile. <laughs> oh, brother. Listen, if See, I don't want to flip through the pages of a comic. You, yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, it shit to me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get the one button by, baby? <laughs> yeah, please. Please. Let's up. Uh, it's that fast delivery. Two more bucks. Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> but um, aside from professional wrestling and amassing <laughs> the uh, greatest game collection that has ever been collected, um, from what I've seen, you know, peeping through the window of Instagram once again or whatever, uh, you got you got a whole bunch of other side deals or other hustles that you got going on as well besides professional wrestling. I think at one point in time you're trying to be a cop or something. Oh well. Here's the thing, right? Um, yes. Um, first of all, they're the best gang in the world. Uh, so yeah, yeah I was, uh, <laughs> yeah, like, I, um, I respect the police, you know, even though sometimes they don't respect us. And, like, you can't let a few bad apples ruin it for everybody. And, uh, more importantly, uh, you know, I'm in Philly. So sometimes, you know, like, I have a hard skin, you know, just like a New Yorker. Mm hmm. But sometimes, you know, you see stuff and you'd be like, damn, like, I wish there was, like, people that cared. You know what I mean? Like, there's sometimes police officers see stuff or whatever and they, they pass by. And as corny as it sounds, I kind of would like to be that guy. You know, like, if a girl comes to me and says, hey, you know, I was coming home from school and I got raped and this is the guy or, like, you know, something to that extreme. I kind of would like to be that officer that goes there, grips this son of a bitch up, give him a rough ride put him in the jail cell, make sure he go uh, serve his years. Like my mom, my mom was raped when she was um a teenager. So like, I have like very little patience for that. Yeah. I got so you. that's like, what, and I got three daughters. So like, that's yeah. like a high motivation thing for me is like, I, I can't stand rapists. I can't stand um, people that abuse children. And um, you can only do so much from the sideline. You know what I mean? And like, yeah. I've known people that's been taken advantage of. So, it's one of those type of things where, yeah, I want to be a cop. Like, I mean, I get, I sit there and like, uh, whenever something's an interest for me or whatever, I go after it. Yeah. And like, this is a strong interest and I'm supposed to be taking the police, uh, test again. As soon as they tell me my exam date, because I took it, uh, two years ago and I kept taking it and I kept failing the, um, the running portion. I passed everything, the tests and like mm -hmm. the, 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 the paragraphs like, hey, yeah, can you read, you know, all that stuff? Um, yeah. <laughs> the physical activities, but the last part is you got to run around this track like eight times and like they'll tell you within 12 minutes. And like, you know, you'd be like, that's cool. I could do that. I did it. Uh, it didn't work out. And I was like, damn, all right, well, let me get hydrated. But here's the kicker. It was like 630 in the morning. Who runs two miles 630 in the morning? Well, you know, probably, you know, boxers. So never mind. But anyway, I don't. <laughs> so I, I've been training. So the next time around, I will be Officer the Shield or Officer Blackie. <laughs> I, I like the second one, o Officer Blackie. That's right. Yeah, Officer Blackie, Officer. I mean, but you know, uh, aside from um, being a police officer and whatnot, um, have you ever thought about being a vigilante? Um, currently, right now, uh, the way my knees are set up, no, but uh. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to have a sidekick, man. I would have What's to have your, a sidekick. You, you got one. Your tag partner. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be like, come on, man. I can't do this shit. You know, for some reason, my partner sounds like fruit. But come on, man. Damn. <laughs> I'll put on that spandex. Are we getting paid for this? <laughs> nah, man. Treat it like Ring of Honor. Oh, but, oh, uh, you know, um, I don't know, man. I, uh, <laughs> vigilante like are you talking about like uh what's, what's that terrible superhero that's on um netflix the um black lightning you talking about like that guy yeah you can be a superhero uh, w without the powers so that's why i call you vigilante because i mean you wouldn't have no powers <laughs> you just oh, be damn. like oh no oh no the, the super samaritan <laughs> no man these thugs in philly are strong <laughs> <laughs> they is the real kingpin <laughs> yeah hey yo, look at this dude in the purple suit yo shoot him <laughs> it won't like, work. 
It, <laughs> we had our first appearance of our first superhero and our last appearance of our superhero. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Bob, there's a tragedy down here at Target. Uh, they were being held up and um, black man walked in there and uh, he was shot with a machine Uzi. You know what I mean? So, yeah, we're not going to. Nah, no vigilante. No. I, I understand. I mean, it, just to. I don't know. They're out there somewhere. This motherfucking uh, fucking Guy Forks mask looking like V from Vendetta and shit. Fucking motherfuckers oh. up on the street. <laughs> Yeah, that's true, but uh, it ain't no, me. not me, not me, brother. Yeah. Well, I mean, other than a police officer and a professional wrestler, um, through once again the window that is Instagram, I've seen that you've worked in the adult entertainment field. Yeah, shout out to Instagram, man. You see, they're bringing us together. You all the way in Houston, <laughs> I'm all the way in Philadelphia, and we're just. Robbie, man, me and you, you can't see this right now, man, but it's, it's the pound thing, man. Right yeah. through the screen, brother. Mm, right for, there. For real, that Chris Pie oh. 5 I was talking about earlier. <laughs> yeah, you know what? That's better for audio. Hold up. There it is. There, there <laughs> we go. Um, uh, yeah, so here's the thing. Um, the adult store, uh, ooh, uh, man, you had to hear how my kids are like, oh, yeah, so, dad, you got the new job? Like, yeah, where, where, where are you? I'm like, uh, at work. That's all you need to know. <laughs> I'm a key holder. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yup. Where at? A boutique. Yeah, that's it. Oh, can so, I come shop? What, what they got there? They got some of my size? Oh, no. <laughs> absolutely not. We can go to shop right and get you some cookies. Um, So, working there was an experience because like, you come across... Oh, my God. I learned so much there. It was like people... Uh, 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 genders like there's like different ones it's like uh, what is it like trans uh fluent i think it is is like sometimes you feel like a man sometimes you feel feminine sometimes you sometimes feel you f- uh, sometimes you feel like a nut sometimes you don't <laughs> <laughs> yo <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. and like ju- customers will come in there and they'll be like um I'm not going to be explicit, but they'll come in and just be like, yeah, you know, um, like a dude, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, a manly man, just like, yeah, you know, um, yeah, I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to have some anal play with my boyfriend and like, I'm sitting there, like you be hearing some, some wild stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah, me and, uh, my wife were in a scat play. I'm like, excuse me. Yeah. What? <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So we do have these latex, um, Sets over here. Um, yeah, so you uh, let me look at the instructions real quick. I'm like, yeah, so you sold it up here. I had another customer come in there and was asking for a drill dough, which is a, a dildo on a drill. It was like a specialty thing. And I'm like, God, I hope she's using this for like a bachelorette party because if she's doing this to her, she's about to destroy this box. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, and the only thing that I got that was, you know, remotely close to working at a adult shop was uh i worked at spencer's gifts ah and damn you know they sell like the the tame stuff there you know novelty things and whatnot so you know i would get the little college chicks coming there she like four foot nothing or whatever but she getting a damn massager air quotes here oh uh, that's like six foot seven and shit <laughs> yeah <laughs> You know, the funny part is at the uh, the adults, like, first of all, I didn't know that many toys exist. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, there's a remote. And it's like, oh, okay, like on and off. And it's like, oh, no, brother. No, no. When you spend $99, <laughs> it has on, off, it has high and low. But when you spend 200 it has on, off, high, low. It has uh, needling, paddling, and some other stuff, but when you pay three hundred, I'm like, well, shit. Do you get a person? Like, goddamn. <laughs> if you'll buy it, man. This one dude, yo, it's on my Instagram too. If you go back yeah. two years, the guy came in the store and he stole an ass. Yeah, I, I, I did see that, and yeah, I've some. I, <laughs> <laughs> I got a homeboy back at home, and he's just like. Man, you know, Dee Dee got one of them little asses in a box. So I was like, what the, what? He, he said he done with them women, man. I was like, what the fuck is you talking about? 
and he uh went on Google search and found me a picture and sent it to me. I was like, he got one of those. It, it looked like a little booty in the box, and I was just like, ah. <laughs> what's in the box? <laughs> what's in the box? <laughs> <laughs> And I don't knock it because, uh, you know, working there, it, it came with, you know, perks like, oh, you can take this stuff home. Now, for the audience, I did not take home an ass in the box. I didn't. But, I mean, you know, maybe like, you need knowledge on this stuff. You know, here, take these and take that. And yeah. Some of that shit is scary, man. You know what a popper is? No. It sounds, I'm, it sounds I'm scary. You, I'm going to just let you Google it. But, I mean, some of this shit, man, you'd be like, really? No, I, I don't want to Google it. Just tell me now. <laughs> Uh, you know, it kind of, um, it, uh, oh shit. Um, <laughs> man, just Google it, people. Poppers, you know what I'm saying? There we go. Poppers, there we go. Right. Or whip. There you go. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> just le- let me, you, the same motherfucker that don't want to damn flip a page of a comic book, don't even elaborate on some shit that, to another motherfucker that don't want to turn a page to a comic book. What make you think I want to get on Google, goddammit? <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I don't know. You might be, you might talk to your phone. You might have one of those, uh, those, uh, the Echo Dot things in the house. And you just might be like, hey, Alexa, or whoever's on there, and you know, she tells you what it is. Hell no. Nah. If I could just ramble for one second Go on ahead. itself, feel thank free. You. Thank you. Am I the only person who just said, you know what? Fuck it. I have an S9. You ain't getting no more of my money because. They literally tell you with every phone, it's our best one yet. Our cameras, three megapixels. Like, well, what the hell was the last one from last year? 2.9. It's like, they don't change shit about the phones anymore. And they'd be like, oh, you're going to love this, this iPhone XS Max Legend Super Ultra. It's, it's a- like, well, how much is it? 21.99. What a month? No. 21,000. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, <laughs> I could buy four hoopies in Philly for twenty one hundred. Like, come on, man, damn. Yeah, it's just like um, a freaking the power levels on Dragon Ball Z. He's super god level three X Galaxy two. <laughs> this is true. Yeah, Super Saiyan five iPhones, man. Yeah, and, and I, I I get what you're saying or whatever. I mean, I've. I used to be the one that, like, every September, you know, usually that's when Apple make an announcement. I'm trying to mm-hmm. get the new phone or whatever, but, you know, years back, I was just like, I was just, I came to the same realization as you. I mean, they don't change shit too much. I mean, they add a couple of cool features or whatever. So I've scaled back in every two years or if I need a new phone, that's when I would get one. So, like, I started off with the four, then I went to the six, and now I'm on the eight. So wasn't it for a beautiful phone though. Yeah, it was cool, man. It did exactly what it needed to do, and it didn't need have all these other crazy shits and whatnot. It's just the phone, the apps, what I needed, and that was it. Right, like I used the S nine plus. Oh man, I sound like uh, William Washington now. <laughs> but like I, <laughs> I have the S nine plus and got the thumb reader. It reads my face. Mm-hmm. It does everything that the other phones do. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, it don't have triple cameras, but guess what? My Instagram only needs one, so whatever. And uh, and I'm good to go, man. You but, know. But wait like, a minute. I, but wait a minute. If you mm-hmm. got the three hundred, uh, if you got the three thousand dollar version, it would have damn rubbed your balls. It would have vibrated. It would have went up and down. It would have went. To- <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> That's gonna be on the shopping list now. You, you drive a good point there. Yeah. yeah. Apple you just sold me. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, man. But damn, uh, what about that fucking folding phone that you you ever seen that thing? You know what? That was the fo- the first phone in like the last uh two years where I was like, you know what? Let me let me do the bird man and rub my hands together. You know what? I can't wait. I might have to get that foldable John. And then like uh the reviewers, I watch uh this dude named Lou on uh YouTube and um they were just like reviewing it and just like it's like, oh yeah, well, you know, there's a line in the middle and like, oh yeah, this shit's falling apart. And then I just I was like, you know what? Yeah, I can't spend two grand on a phone that's falling apart and breaking. But in theory, I would love that phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much a, a tablet. I mean, it got six cameras on that motherfucker. So it got when you fold it open, it got two in, the, you know, on that side. You close it, it got two on the front and it got two on the back. Yeah, because like I'm the type of guy you got to do something different. You want you want my money. You yeah. want my hard uh, 
my hard earned money. You got to do something different, like sidekick, you know, spin that shit out, man. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Blackberry, slide it up and down. Now we're at a point where it's like, all right, well, what can you do? Can, can you like wrap around my wrist? Can you fold? Like, can you, can I twist you like a Rubik's cube and then you open up? You know what I mean? You got to do yeah. something for me. So don't foldable phones though. When they make one and they don't break, Mm-hmm. Don't get my three thousand seven hundred eighty nine dollars and thirteen cent. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean that's kind of what I'm waiting on the the new new or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I mean, once the new new gets here, you still have to wait because that's usually the first phase. And as you saw, motherfucker falling apart already. <laughs> yeah, like well, Apple. If you got iPhone, Apple's going to make you because they're going to send the. Uh, the polio virus through their networks to your older phone so that way oh, yeah. it starts down and short circuit and they're like yeah i gotta buy the iphone 13 now mm-hmm. well shit i mean I, I i have patience when it comes to my phone or whatever so i didn't give a shit when that shit was happening to mine i was like oh man my phone acting up oh well i just don't use it right now i was like you're not gonna get me fuckers <laughs> <laughs> now let me ask you a serious question because you know what god damn it. me and you've been friends for the longest time now and the one thing I want to ask you is, what's up with the lines at Walmart? <laughs> Why? Like, I know, like, I know it's not just a Philadelphia thing, even though we probably got hands down the worst, like, I don't give a shit what they're paying me an hour. I'm going on break now and I just got here type of cashiers. But why is it there's always two goddamn lines and then a self checkout? They'd be like, yo, you can't take out more than X. And people be having four carts. In self checkout, I just need you to explain to me what is the policy on this, man. What is the deal? Um, <laughs> These I, pretzels are making me thirsty. But yeah, what's up with it? I have no fucking clue. I, I from here, the Walmart that I frequent here, the one that's less than a mile away from my house by design. Um, it's just, I don't know. They this buku motherfuckers around this bitch, man. The Walmart that's here is a uh, fairly new, so you know when something get that new car smell or anything, bitches just flock to that motherfucker. That's but, true. But damn, they do a good job with the self checkout. As far as quantity of items or whatever, I've never seen anything more than you know maybe two cases of water and a couple of arm held items and whatnot. But I haven't seen nothing ridiculous here in this one. Um, mm. The freaking 20 items or less line or the 15 items or less line or whatever the fuck. That's where you run into the, the problems or whatever. Cause as soon as the motherfucker light come on on the aisle, bitches flock to that motherfucker. Cause you know, they're barely open on the regular lines and shit. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's the only point of contention I have there. And then that fucking customer service line is just be from the counter to around to the entrance where the greeters at and shit. And I'm like, how many money grams y'all motherfuckers doing? You might as well put costing tape over there because you can't get over there. I'm like, I'm not standing in that line. Uh, you know what I find find it funny sometimes or whatever. And I mean, this old player rule. I mean, not player rule, player player tactic or whatnot. I've been seeing um, girls bringing guys to the money gram thing to put money on their fucking bills and shit. Oh, word! Oh, wow! <laughs> There's so, one born every second. Yeah. So I mean. I know what it is now because I, I was a sucker many moons ago. And, um, yeah, shit, shit. It, it's funny in hindsight, but when it happened to you, it's just like, oh, word. And then it's not even the fact that you, you know, she playing you, whatever. You, you legitimately trying to be a nice person and help somebody out. But the circumstances that was uh, around the whole situation was just like, ugh, buku. It's almost like you pay for the ass almost. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, like I'm from Philly, man. Like if I that happened to me, man, she'd end up on ID channel. I'd be like, yeah, I don't know what happened, man. She just fell down that ditch like that. I don't know, man. No, I wasn't doing the money grams earlier, but uh, yeah, yeah, man. I, I don't know. Like, I just had to ask you, brother, because Walmart is an. I love that store, but it's just an anomaly to me. Like I just, I can never figure it out. I'm always getting two to three good laughs out of there. Like I'd be sitting there about to check out and. I'm like, damn, it's only two cashiers. And then I look over there in the juniors and I'll see like two employees. Like they're not like stocking or like uh, putting anything back. They're just standing there. And then you see people like going near them. You see them like sprint off to the back real quick through the double doors. Like you fuck this customer. And it's just, I'm, I just had to ask you, brother. They, they got hip to the game for a while because I would 
go to um, the fallback spots because um, it looked like they're decreasing in their staff. So, like, usually when you went to the front registers and bitches would be full. So I would either go to the jury counter and check mm-hmm. out there because you can do that. But they don't have a motherfucker manning that bitch no more. And then um, usually I would fall back to the electronic section if that was available. I would check out over there. And then um, worst case scenario, I would go to either the garden section or the automotive section and check out there. Because as long as they got the fucking register, except for the, um, sometimes the freaking pharmacy. But they don't usually do nothing unless you damn picking up a prescription or something. But the freaking automotive in the goddamn garden section is uh, two little hidden gems that you can go check out in. So you trying to tell me if I'm sitting there buying shampoos and all these uh these random items, I can go to electronics and check out? Exactly. Oh, I got the game fucked up. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Shit, you cool. go you can go to automotive too, baby. <laughs> I don't know if they got cashiers in the ones uh, the one I go to down here. Oh. Like I just it's like random things like tires that I would never buy there. But uh, <sighs> come on, man, they're like two hundred dollars a tire. I'm like, hey man, I can go down to the Africans down the street and get them for thirty dollars. Yeah, you know yeah. I, mean? I, I, have, I have they got them motherfuckers down here too, man. Motherfucker put new wheels on my shit, rotated them bitches for like thirty dollars. So I was like, word. <laughs> as soon as you get past that 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 language barrier, it's like. Hey, what do you want? It's like, hey man, let me get a let me get a tire. Oh, oh, fifteen, sixteen. Blah, 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 blah. It's like, hey man, listen, I don't know, man. Whatever, thirty five dollars getting. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, my old lady bust a tire, and I rolled up in the um, I got it to the little corner joint and whatever. I was like, hey man, she need a tire. The motherfuckers NASCAR the fuck out of that shit, man. Like, bah, 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 and she was gone. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> now, let me ask you a question. What part of where you at in Houston, right? Like, is it um? City or was a bunch of like old town road type motherfuckers. Like, what, what is it like where no, you at? No, what where well where, where I currently am now. I mean, I'm I'm in the north side of Houston, so the area that I live in is called Spring, and it's a. I don't know. I would say if if we if we, if we go in there, so, you know, my brother, my brother, it's a bunch of white people live around here, but uh-huh. um, it's not that bad. But what the thing about it is with Houston though. There's no segregation here. You know, it's just like, all right, I say this is a white neighborhood, but you go up the block and around the corner, hood. You go up the block and around the corner from that, mansions. You go to block and around the corner from that, you're back in the hood. I mean, it's just, it's no escape here, no matter where you are. The only it's thing. like that, though? That's, oh, that, that's interesting. Yeah, but the only thing about the north side of Houston or whatever is just like, it's almost uncharted territory. There's like not a lot of shit up here as it is in, on the south side and um, the lower parts of Houston and whatnot. So this is like the extension of Houston. They're starting to branch out out here. They got a brand new freeway that's getting built up this way. There's more businesses popping up over here. And with Houston, it's sectioned to where you shouldn't have to go out of your neighborhood unless you're looking for some specialty shit. So like... Uh-huh. If I go to the next uh, neighborhood over, I mean, they got a Ross, they got a Marshalls, they got a Walmart, they got a HEB, which is the grocery store around here. They got everything that you would need for that section. But if you want to go to Mickey's freaking soul food, that's down on the motherfucking south side. They only got one of them or maybe even two of them. And they both on the south side. So you got to leave from the north side to the south side to find some specialty shit. Okay. Well, if I... uh if Booker T ever returns my uh my goddamn uh inbox uh when I come back there to go to his uh his show right behind the bowling alley, I need to pay you a visit, man, so you can uh show me around, brother. Oh yeah, I got you, man. I got you. Now and also to that effect, I'm be touching down in Philly November second. I need you to do the same thing for me. Oh, say say it ain't so. I got you, brother. Listen, we'll go down to South Street. And we'll take you to uh, Fat Tuesdays, and we'll get you like uh, kind of drunk off those drinks, and then we'll go to uh, Tattoo Mom's. It's like this little shitty little uh, little shitty spot or whatever, but they got great food. And then I'm gonna take you to listen, man. I'm gonna take care of you, bro. When you come down here, man, listen, Blackie got you. All right, I, and, and the same for you, sir. And you know what? Th- this is my thing about Booker T joint down here. Damn, right by the bowl of knowledge. Yeah, well, they don't live there no more. They, oh, they, they built they built a brand new facility down in Texas City. 
or whatever. But anyway, besides the point, um, anytime he have a show, the only time that I, other than the, um, they got Kiefer Bartek and, uh, JJ Blake down there. They've both been a guest on this show. Um, I need to go see him. I got to see him here in Houston, but I haven't got to see him down there in ROW. But anytime Kiara Hogan went down there, you know, cause you was here too. God damn it. There it was. That was the one that I forgot. Kiara Hogan. God damn. How did I forget yeah. that? Fuck. Yeah. The Kiara Hogan. She's doing good, man. She's doing her thing, man. Shout out to you. I never met her, but she seemed like cool people from yeah. uh, what I've seen. Yeah. I got to talk to her a little bit. I, I met her at the wrestling con in person for New Orleans. So that was cool. But every time she came here, something came up to where I couldn't make it to the show. And, you know, that that's the kind of one of the ones I wanted it to be my first show to go. But it, I tell you what, if you come here, I hold off on all that bullshit and I make you my first show down at ROW if you come. <laughs> oh, oh, listen, hey, Booker. I was thinking like he's like, <laughs> like he listening, huh? Yeah. As soon as, uh, all right, I'm going to hold you to that, brother. Yeah, hold it, goddamn it! Put it in your uh, your Sega CD and spin that bitch. <laughs> Listen, I'm gonna put that inside my BlackBerry. Oh man, I had one. Of, damn man, I had I, mm-hmm. I formed an eight year relationship with a person off of BlackBerry Messenger. <laughs> How did y'all use that? The, the, what was it? The 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 BBM or yeah, the BBM? Or, uh, yeah, yeah. The big black like, motherfucker. I- <laughs> <laughs> See when the, when the BlackBerry was all like popping, man. I was I was a Nextel uh, Boost Mobile guy, man. I was sitting, I was chirping up. You chirping Listen, man, for, yeah, for a dollar a day, scoo Like yo, what up, man? Scoo I'm chilling. Scoo Or you know what I mean? That was me. <laughs> yeah, but that BlackBerry thing was crazy, man. Um, it was just like our own little thing. It was like the iPhone of that time. And um, my ho- I got a nephew that do music. And um, I met a girl through um, officialpsds.com dot com is to where is a artist resource to where you can go and find pre cut images for like make to make flyers and all kind of other different uh, graphic effects and all that shit. So okay. we we met through the chat room and I was like trying to get his shit out there. He was trying looking to get on people mixtapes and all kind of stuff. And she put me in touch with another guy that she did artwork for who did music and you know dealt in mixtapes. So I got his uh, BBM from him and everything to put him on. And we just been kind of semi cool for like eight years now. <laughs> oh, that's dope. Through motherfucking Blackberry Messenger. <laughs> How about that? I need that's to almost like, if, that's almost, like today. That's almost like, yeah, man, I met so-and-so off of uh, MySpace or uh, Black Planet. And like, yeah, we still cool, man. Shit. Hey, uh, 12 years in total, 11 years married. I met my wife on Black Planet. <laughs> Oh damn! <laughs> still going strong, man. Shout Hell out to yeah. Black Planet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, nothing, is that still around? It is still around. I mean, as recent as last year, um, I went on to see if it was still working away, and it's still there. Damn, that's like uh, whenever I hop on uh, MySpace, which is very rare. But like, I'll hop on it just to see what's going on. I'm like, damn, there's people still on here and shit. Yep, because it's majority um uh, like a music thing now. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I'm like, oh, okay, well, all right, this is still a thing. That's cool. And then I dip right back over to Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's weird over here, man. Let me go back to the uh, lakes and rivers I'm used to. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, all in all, man, you're doing uh, good things over there on the Dojo Wars and whatnot. I mean, I heard you compelling an argument about how you had to um, – qualify for a match for a title a championship opportunity or whatever and you already a champion or some shit like that yeah because here's my thing i go there and i defend my acpw united states championship and um i'll sit there and i'll come and i'll defend my belt but i'm like yo can i get a shot at y'all wire title can i get a shot at y'all medal of honor i i don't want the heavyweight belt because like for that belt you got to get like cut up and stabbed and like you know thrown off the of cells and stuff so you keep that one but the other johns Yo, what's up with these belts? And it's like, yeah, we'll put you in a match. You'll qualify. And then, like, somehow, referee didn't see it or whatever. I got eliminated and cheated. I'm like, oh, okay. It's because it's no longer February. I get it. Okay. So, you know, whatever. <laughs> Bunch of goddamn hypocrites. There it is. But what, what does the future hold for 
King Blackie in uh, professional wrestling. I mean, what are, what are some of your goals moving forward, man? What, what, what you got that? What's the pride prize you got your eyes on? I mean, ultimately, I want to be the top indie guy and go from the top indie guy to the best wrestler in the world and then transcend into what people perceive as the big time, which would be WWE or NXT. Like, that's uh, the goal. Uh, next month, I have a tryout with a WNN and, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're partnered with, um, NXT. So hopefully, you know, things will go right and I can go to the next level, brother. And then, uh, yeah, be, uh, moving along. Yeah. Oh, well, what do you feel about AEW now? Man, listen, that show on Saturday, I don't think the boys understood how important it was for that show to do well. And I yeah. think they did well. Oh, I yeah. mean, there was a match or two that I would have took off or swapped or, uh, you know, took off or swapped. But other than that, though, I mean, they delivered for the most part and the buzz around them is, uh, is percolating, man, even more than when Impact was like uh, switching over to Spike or like going to Monday nights. And mm -hmm. it's just a good time in the business right now, man. We need a number two. I wish I was around when WCW was around. Yeah. Now, what do you feel about as far as talent wise, uh, John Moxley? I met John Moxley uh, in CZW uh, like 10 years ago. I guess when I started training is when him and Sammy came over from Ohio. And Moxley is a, a cool-ass dude, man. Like what you see is what you get. You get the gravelly voice mm -hmm. and like you get that uh, – what you see is like what you get. I remember it was a, um, a tournament of death and um, Nick Gage had like uh, – he got injured. He had to be um, – medevac out of there by airplane and um uh dj was like uh nikki's hurt somebody go out there you know i only been wrestling for like about like six months i'm like shit they got grandfather clocks and like boards with blades in it and shit i'm like i don't know moxie was like fuck it i'll do it and like he just <laughs> he, he went out there and he just got you know the shit beat out of him but i was just like that's a stand-up dude I'm a sit down guy. I'm gonna watch him do what he do. But that's a stand up thing to do. And as I was saying that, he was getting hit with a grandfather's clock. You know, them big ass like dong, yeah. dong. Yeah. Got the shit beat up. Nice dude though. I Man, I've talking to him like after he's gotten like cut up and shit, fully coherent and just smooth as fuck, man. I, I'm I'm glad he's uh he he took the shackles off and he's back with us on the Indies now. Yeah, because I mean he got a uh, um some good matches lined up here. Uh, he going against uh, Joey Janela pretty soon. He, mm -hmm. um, I just seen the vignette for his uh, debut in New Japan, which is that's fucking amazing. So he going up that I haven't seen it yet. Something about like an hourglass or something, right? Oh yeah, uh, it's his because uh, you know New Japan usually when they debut somebody they got a character for him or whatnot. So it's on his uh, Twitter. There's only like three things on his Twitter now. So check that shit out. Is whoever's doing the vignettes for him. You seen the one where he broke out of prison or whatever. It was done great. Yeah. yeah. I thought the company did it at first. I'm like, wait, no, that doesn't make sense. But yeah, it's done great. Yeah. So I, I believe it's the same people that did his new Japan promo video. Cause it was damn it. It's to rival that video as well. It's, it's fucking well put together, man. And I believe, I mean, well, I don't believe, I mean, I hope, that this is a trend for him you know he if he's going to do big things with a big promotion that you know his marketing team because obviously it looks like he has a marketing team now um that keeps doing shit like this for him or whatever because it's just it's fucking amazing man it's good to see oh yeah absolutely but i sat i'm looking forward to his match with darby allen yeah yeah that too that he got a match with darby allen he got a match with joy janella and somebody else uh, i already said juice robinson but I just seen the um, the graphic for it. It might have been Darby Allen, but I, that was the three matches that. Oh, maybe Pentagon. Yeah, that's it. Yep, he's going against a uh, Pentagon at uh, some show. It's supposed to be a good show that that draws really well. I can't remember it off the top, but yep, he's going against Pentagon too. Yeah, man, that's gonna be freaking crazy. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, man, happy to have him back, man. Like, it's just one of those type of things where it's good to be a wrestler right now. It's like. There's 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 more um, places for us to work. Things are opening up. Like I mean, I would love for it to get back to like 98, 99 status. Even 
the indies to get back to where they were in like 2000, 2001, because wrestling became uncool for a while, man. You got guys out there punt kicking babies on roll, and yeah. it just got damn like the shit would make you go ah, like the boogeyman, and like you know it, things where people walk in the room, you be like ah yeah, I don't do that. Yeah, uh, just the shit you do. You know what I mean? Like you just need more people to come out and be themselves. That's why I try and be myself on these indie shows. And, um, you know, an exception of looking for a way to, uh, murder somebody to go viral. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, need more people to be themselves and not so gimmick and like play Russell, but be a wrestler. Yeah. I got you. Well, man, I appreciate you giving me your time. I mean, it's been a, a great experience to have you here on the pod, but, um, we're going to have to wind it down right here, man, before we go. Let everybody know where they can find you on social media and whatever it is you got coming up. Absolutely. Um, thank you for having me. B-Rock, it's been an amazing experience. I wanted to talk to you when uh, when you was on RBR, but, you know, I couldn't get to the phone lines because we would have busted up. But uh, yeah. uh, the people can catch me on uh, Facebook underneath um, King Blackie, one word, uh, pro, last name. So King Blackie dash pro. And on uh, Instagram, um king of the 215 underscore and between uh all the words and on twitter i'm uh king blackie pro all one word same thing and on youtube it's uh king blackie pro or uh kayfabe studios word and and i'll be defending my championship tonight at czw and uh preston new jersey or 333 preston new jersey uh, ACPW uh, June 22nd anywhere in between where promoter has a bag for me or whatever I'll be there as well <laughs> about that bag baby hell yeah but hey man once again it's a pleasure to have you on I appreciate you giving me your time and the door is open you've been a guest anytime you want to come back to plug whatever it is you want to plug hopefully not your orifices with all that goodies and gags at the adult store and it's over man no more of that man <laughs> <laughs> but yeah man you're welcome back anytime bro well, thanks for having me man it's been a pleasure man to everybody who's uh supporting the podcast keep supporting it random uh random ramblings with rob it entertains me on my uh my road trips uh keep supporting the show uh hit my uh my social medias up buy my merch i got kids feed god damn it <laughs> that, I know you got the Heath Slater shirt to say I got kids and shit, but that that's that should be your shirt. That should be your spin on it. I got kids to feed, god damn it. <laughs> oh, the god damn it turns it into something else, man. It's like with vanilla ice when he's like, his go ding 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 to the ding ding, mine's go ding 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 to the doom doom. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. So thank you. I'm gonna do that. <laughs> All right, man. We clear. King of the two one five. Baddest man alive. See that I'm a hip hop extreme extremist extraordinary I don't, I don't know what the fuck i was saying right now <laughs> but it's here as i record an early sunday morning june 23rd so that means last night was june 22nd and my man had a title defense from what i understand he was very successful and he is still draped in gold as i mentioned earlier in the pod never see this dude without a belt whether it's the same belt over and over again or it's some tag titles or whatever the case may be this dude always has a freaking belt so uh, check him out on Twitter and uh, Instagram and Facebook, all those different places that he gave you. All those things will be in the show description. So if you can't remember it off the top of your head, it's there for you to click down in the description and get that info for you. Yep. So doing a lot of things, he doing the dojo wars and whatnot, tearing up shit in CW and making the towns, man. It's just like any great independent professional wrestler would do. So um, he's in Philly or around the area and I'll be out there November 2nd and 3rd for um, the J1 Con. So this will be as we keep count of all the things big and small uh, the third freaking convention that I'm going to be uh, going to be invited to to be a part of uh, next weekend the weekend of the 29th and the 30th of June, I will be in Corpus Christi for the Corpus Christi Comic Con. So that's the C4 is what they call it over there. I'll be there Saturday and Sunday. 
And if you're in the neighborhood, come check me out, baby. I'll give you that crisp high five that I also uh, mentioned upon on each episode of the show. I think I'm going to make that a shirt. I just can't come up with the design in my brain right now. If you got any thoughts, opinions, and ideas about the crisp high five shirt, some uh, design ideas, or even if you would buy or purchase said item, you know, hit me up. Hit me up, hit me up, hit me up. Um, if you hear the low docile tones in my voice right now, it's because Friday night, not Saturday night. <laughs> That's an inside joke. Um, I was, uh, at a NXT show here in Houston, Texas. I got to hang with former guest, uh, Mike, aka main event swerve on Twitter and, uh, my man Jeremy and Cody. From my hometown of Lake Charles, Louisiana, they made the trip into Houston to go to the NXT show. And we had a great fucking time, man. Uh, as you can tell, like I said, I, I lost my voice. I was yelling at everything. I was telling people to tickle people and all kinds of stuff. Um, the show host called me out, had me on camera. I had to dance to the Street Profit song. There's some uh, video of that, um, I think, from Main Event Swerve on the Twitter somewhere. So, uh, it was a, it was a good time. Got to see the guys, uh, Mike, who, um, I was a part of getting him to his first WrestleMania. So, I mean, me and him share that friendship because of that, you know, and, uh, shit, Jeremy and freaking Cody, they live in the town that I was born and raised in and whatnot. So, you know, there's all kinds of kinship from that aspect of it, but man, it was fucking fun. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining me at the show, uh, watching me get uh, inebriated and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, cool. So once again, next weekend, as you as this is recorded, June 29th, June 30th, I'm going to be in Corpus Christi, Texas for the C4. Uh, November 2nd, November 3rd, I'll be in Atlantic City, New Jersey for the J1 Con. I'm going to be a part of the Blackfinity Gauntlet panel and um probably doing some live shows out there. I threw it out there the last episode. If you in the New Jersey area, Atlantic City specifically, or Philly, or wherever the surrounding area is for that, if you're a fan of the show, you got a thing you want to plug, or you just want to be a part of a podcast, man, I take you on as a guest, baby. Come on, hit me up in the DM. And, um, you know, just a little bit of a sneak peek behind the photo. Behind the photo. God damn, if you look behind the photo, it's just nothing. This paper, the, the pictures on the front. <laughs> uh, excuse me. I, I was up last night. I got a Nintendo Switch. That's pretty cool. I stayed up half of the night drinking and setting that thing up. I haven't even played on it yet. But, um, yeah, uh, I put in for, uh, the New York Comic Con, which is going to be October. Uh, I forget the dates or whatever but it's in the october so if all pans out if they accept me as a press media for new york comic-con there's a high probability that i'll be in new york for that in october so i'll be all on the east coast in december i mean not december in uh november and october october november i'll be in the east coast so everybody that i missed on the first go around hopefully i can get you on the second or the third go around if you in that area so yeah a lot of big things popping off for the random rounds with rob baby i'm excited i'm i'm just overjoyed i'm making decals from my truck i can make some decals for you for the low hit me up in the dm <laughs> i'm just trying to expand my circle baby you know so uh Stand by and look forward to new things from the show. Um, let me get out of here so I can rest this voice up a little bit. I got some other things I need to get into on this Sunday morning as I record. But um, you can find me on Twitter at It's B-Rob, I-T-S-B-R-O-B. If you want to talk professional wrestling and any other general shenanigans, that's the place you do it. The show that you're listening to, the Random Rounds with Rob podcast, you can find on Twitter also at 3R Show. And then we're going to do this again just to see if anybody capitalize on it. Right now, you can win yourself a free shirt from uh, randomrobcast.com forward slash merch of your choosing, your size, your color of preference. If you can uh, DM me the secret word. All right, last time it was Ninja Chop. That's not the thing 
this time. The secret word is going the secret phrase is going to be elbow strike. <laughs> so you hit me with an elbow strike in the DM, I get you a free shirt to your location. And um follow me on Twitter. I already said that having a brain fart. <laughs> But um, follow me on Instagram to search the random rounds with Rob or use the hashtag 3R show. You can find me there walking the hollow halls of Walmart doing the things I do. And I also mentioned randomrobcast.com. You can go to randomrobcast.com and find many different ways to support the show to whether it be buying merch specifically made by me and uh, using Amazon links to help me get a little bit of kickback off your purchases. You do not pay extra. Um, shit, if you uh, want to be a patron, you can do that month to month. And if you don't want to do it month to month, you just want to straight up donate some cash. You can hit me on the cash app and PayPal It's all on randomrobcast.com. And let me speak to you a moment about Patreon. I appreciate everybody that does it. You don't have to do it, but I highly appreciate it. And the origin of the Patreon thing for me was just because, you know, it was just another means to help people support the show if they chose to. Now, I mean, truth be told, I'm not really, you know, creating a lot of extra content for the Patreon right now. You know, I mean, I have Buku episodes already pre-recorded that I try to get the unedited, you know, pre-game talks and the post-game talks for these episodes that you're hearing on the live on the feed every week. But, you know, I've been slacking on that and whatnot. And um, I feel like I'm not putting a lot into it. And, you know, when I start feeling like that. You know, I usually start to remove things and whatnot. So, you know, I'll give it a little while longer. You know, if I'm not living up to the expectations of what a, I, I perceive a Patreon um, account should be, you know, I'm going to just erase it. I'm going to let it fade away and consider itself as obsolete. So I might, you know, retire it and maybe bring it back later, come back wearing the full five or something. You know, when I get a more stable, solid plan or I can have an idea for more content that I can create and produce and whatnot. Because, I mean, life is busy, baby. You know, I work 12 hours a day. I come home. I try to do all these recordings. Then I got personal shit. Then I got all the other hobbies and business things that I'm trying to do. So, I mean, it's kind of hard for one person to... um throw this extra content out there for you to make it worth your while for the dollar three dollars five dollars or ten dollars or whatnot if you do the ten dollar tier i mean you get discounts on the merchandise that i mentioned on randomrobcast.com forward slash merch and um yeah so that's just how i feel about the thing you know so i just like to be transparent with everybody let them know how i'm feeling what i'm thinking but anyway um but f all that you don't have to pay me a dime of your money you're listening and supporting the show in that way is the most important. You know, your interactions with the show, your tweets, your retweets, your likes, your shares. And the most important thing that you could do for this podcast and any other podcast you listen to is write reviews. Five stars preferably. But if you write anything under four stars, I need some uh, feedback, you know, help me get that constructive criticism I need. But that's it. Uh, look forward for some more episodes of the Run Around the Rob podcast. And I'll see you next time.